Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's go for the Lungo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungo, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day so if there's something that you guys want us to react to let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below and we'll do it for you so today it's a we're reacting to Ami did that all his love Ami did that lessons or oh, these videos and i'm so so excited by the way we also do other things you can find the links in the description box and just enjoy so today we're going to be reacting to all christians make up your mind without wasting time let's get into the video I think, Mr. Chairman, my daughter there, you know, has raised so many issues, you know, in a brief, very few minutes. I don't know whether I'll be able to do justice to them all. But uh, talking about opponents or enemies, you see, you can take this word in the sense that the Christian is using it. He is calling us heathens. If you read the books written by your own people, you say, how lost are the heathen? You know, heathen mean kafirs. And who are they? All that are not Christians are heathens. Kafirs, we, unbelievers. I know that you wouldn't consider us unbelievers, but this is what your people say. My friend, Jimmy Swaggart, you know, I'm listening to his talk on the video, and he says, uh, he says, I love you all. All. But... He says, if you do not accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, as your God and Lord, you are not my brother. Then what am I? He said, you are not my brother. He repeats. So I said, look, these are rhetorics. These are rhetorics. You can also pass my statements also as a rhetoric. But coming to the main point, you see, about every being born, everybody born in sin, I said, this is the Christian concept. We do not believe so. And the Bible doesn't teach so. You see, in the book of Luke, first chapter, Elizabeth and her husband, you read there twice. Elizabeth, it says, was sinless. And her husband, Zechariah, was sinless. Jesus speaks about Abel. Is it from righteous Abel to Zechariah? You kill the prophets. Who the Jews? He, did he say righteous? Did he say righteous? Is in your book. If he says righteous, that means he was what was speaking with a tongue in his cheek. He was bluffing the people. If he said righteous, then they must have been righteous. So you say everybody is a sinner. I said, look, why should you, you know, label everybody with the same brush? Paint everybody with the same brush. You have no right to do that. And God Almighty tells us in the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, he says, he the Lord had made man upright, but he had sought out many inventions. These are all your concoctions, your creation. He didn't make you so. If he created us as sinners, then what right has he to expect us to get up and walk straight? If I'm born a sinner, I'm weighted down with the lodestone of sin, and he wants to expect me to wait, walk straight. I say, he's unjust. He's unjust. The God who loads me up, you load your little child and say, come on, straight up, straighten up. You've got a, a soldier's haversack on his back. You know, you're a four-year-old, a five-year-old, and the poor fellow is almost, you know, uh, meeting the ground. And you say, why don't you stand up straight and walk? He says, you are unjust. We'll say, you are a lunatic. God Almighty, if he does the same thing to us, he also will describe him as a lunatic. You see, this idea of sin inherited, this is Christianity. You talk about the original sin, that sin came into the world. But the Bible doesn't say that. In the book of Ezekiel, God says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Have you heard that before? Yes. Every Christian preacher, lecturer, evangelist quotes this. And he puts a full stop. He puts a full stop in a verse which has no full stop. See, where it's supposed to be a comma or a semicolon, the Christian puts a full stop. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Then he takes you out from there into Corinthians, Philippians, Galatians, and he says, everyone has sinned. So everyone dies unless somebody comes along and redeems him of that curse. I said, look, listen, read it further. He says, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Father Adam, he made a mistake. Mother Eve made a mistake. And they paid more than the full price. If somebody goes and plucks some fruits in your garden, they were told not to. What do you do? 
you chase the child out, you might give it a spanking, but now you follow that child up, his children and his children and his grand, great-grandchildren for eternity. <laughs> Can you imagine a God like that, a Shylock, worse than a Shylock? Adam and Eve, they sinned. So God kicks them out of the garden. I'm asking, is that not punishment enough? Then he curses them, that you woman, you must bear children in pain and suffering, labor, uh, for, for, for what you have done. And man, you must sweat for your bread. And you are all sweating and you are all laboring. As a result of what Adam and Eve did. Is, not, is that not enough? No, not for this Shylock of a God that you convey to us. He goes on now and said, every human kind on earth must go to hell. At the beginning of 1986, we were 4.8 billion human beings on earth. And everyone goes to hell, says the Christian. For what? For the original sin. Unless you believe in Christ. I'm asking, did Eve ask you, my sister, before eating the apple? Did she? No. Did Adam ask you before eating the apple? No. <laughs> then I said, how can God hold you responsible? Is he a lunatic? This God of ours, is he a lunatic? He's going to hold me responsible for what Adam and Eve did when I was not consulted. I don't know if you were consulted by Eve. Then you have a right to be cursed. <laughs> What kind of a God is this? So he says, says the, uh, and the father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Whatever good thing the good man does, he gets his reward. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all the sins that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Did you read that in your Bible? Do you read that in your Bible? Book of Ezekiel. Chapter 20. But righteousness is also as much of a free gift as faith is in, Christian, in the Christian understanding. Righteousness is a gift from God, just like eternal life is a gift from God. So we don't have righteousness on our own. When you compare, my sister, look, you see, the Christian world has really gone down the drain, according to Jimmy Swaggart. According to his books, you must read them. If you haven't got them, you must get them on sodomy, homosexuals, get that. On pornography, get it. On incest, get it. On alcohol, get it. And he's telling you, America, he's telling America, he says, America, he says, God must judge you. And if he doesn't, he said, he might have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah for what he did to them. This is Jimmy Swaggart talking. This is where you have gone. After 2,000 years of Christianity, look, you're sodomites. Here in New York, you have one million more women than men. If every man in New York gets married, there'll be one million women who can't get husbands. Yeah. And out of your manpower you have here, one third are gays, sodomites. One third are gays. Your prison population, 98% are men. And men will have cold feet for so many different reasons. Can you imagine your problem? There are 7.8 million more women in America than men. If every man in America got married, there will still be 7.8 million who can't get husbands. And we know every man will never get married. You know that for so many reasons. So there are about 20 million more women in America who can't get husbands. 20 million who can't get husbands. What's the solution? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, what's wrong with you? Are you sick? The person is hungry, you say, hallelujah, and his stomach will be filled. The woman, she needs man, and you say, hallelujah, and her, 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 she'll be satisfied. There's something wrong with you. You had, I give the figure, 44 million, 40, 55 million, according to Jimmy Swaggart, who are drunkards. With all your born again, your Billy Graham, in his book, How to be Born Again, he says there are 75 million born again Christians in America. 75 million. That's about one third, is it? One third of your population. I said, amazing. One third of your nation is born again, immaculate, the spirit is in them, they can't be tempted. The old you, Swagat says, is now left behind. You are a new you now. You are a new person. 75 million. One third. And it doesn't affect the population. You know, Jesus said, a little leaven leaven at the whole. You need a little yeast to ferment the loaf. If one third of your bread is yeast, and if it doesn't ferment the loaf, there's something wrong with your yeast or something wrong with your flour. <laughs> Can you see? So, so I say, my dear child, I say there's something wrong with your flour. See? As well as your yeast. You haven't got it. You haven't got answers to the problems. 
So Jesus is telling you, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth. And if I quote this verse again, with a little emphasis on the pronouns, you will see that it is not the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit or the spook that you are thinking about. Listen, Jesus says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Eight masculine pronouns in one verse. I said, it ill befits a ghost, a spook, or a spirit. You agree? Eight masculine pronouns in one verse. He's talking about a man, a man, a man, a man, and not a ghost or a spirit. And he'll guide you into all truth, meaning he'll supply a solution to all your problems. You haven't got them. Your surplus women, ask Jimmy Swaggart and your Falwell and your Billy Graham, ask them what is the answer. Speechless. You haven't got the answer, so he hasn't written a book on polygamy. Swaggart, about surplus women, he doesn't write. Why doesn't he write? You know why? He's written more than 30. I own them. He won't touch this subject. You know why? You haven't got the answer. There are others where he quotes, the answer is there, but he, as if he hasn't seen it. You know, Jesus said, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. About your sodomies and your lesbians, he's quoting a verse in his book on homosexuals. He starts that book, two and a half page quotation. Imagine a quotation lasting two and a half page, first page, second page, and another half page, two and a half page quotation from the book of Romans in which he quotes, in that verses, in those verses, he quotes the reason for this sickness. He's saying homosexuals, it's cause and it's cure. That's the title of the book. So he quotes, and I'm quoting now, he says, professing themselves to be wise, they're very clever people, they became fools and changed the glory of the imperishable God into an image like unto perishable man. The concept of God, you brought it down from that God Almighty, the Heavenly Father, omnipotent, eternal, immortal, you know, permeates the whole universe. From that concept, you brought him down to the level of a man. And further, it says, and changed the glory of the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Look, it's so simple. Basic English. He's quoting two and a half. And he says, for this cause. I want you to read that. Romans. I forget the reference. It's the first Romans. Romans chapter 4, verse 22, 70, 22, 23, 24, yes. You read that. He says, for this cause, I made your women to go for women and your men to go for men. For this cause, he says, the cause. And it's cure. He's telling you, for this cause, what cause? You now brought God the Almighty down to the level of a man. You're serving a man instead of the supreme being. You're worshipping and, and, and serving a creature instead of the creator. Now, who is he talking about? You Christians. You are the one who brought God down to this level. You said God must come down to earth. He won't understand our problems otherwise. You know, he must understand how we feel. He saw he's so loving, he came down to earth and he lived, born of a woman, he carried him for nine months, born like any other human child, circumcised on the eighth day, growing like any other human being, eating food and calling, call of nature, running to the toilet. God, you brought him down to that level. For that, God says, as I give you punishment, your women will become lesbians and your men become sodomites. Why don't you? Why, look, you read the whole book. And by God, he says, for this cause, the book says, it's cause and it's cure. That word is never used as if he never read it. So Jesus said, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. They already made up their minds. But this exercise, I say, is for those who have eyes to see, ears to hear. Let them hear. That look, you are not reading the book. When you be reading it, you're misunderstanding it, you're misinterpreting it. Please, do, do us a favor. I said, please talk to us. We want to have a dialogue with you. We want to talk to you. You see? And see our point of view. Maybe we are wrong. 
We want you to reprogram us as we want to reprogram you. But the language is me, myself. I just can't help it. I am born a militant fellow in a militant family. My father was militant. I am militant. My brothers are all militant. And I can't help it, you know. My voice, my size, everything, you know, creates that impression that I'm fighting you. I'm scolding you. But you know, my child, I'm not doing that. This is my nature. I just can't help it. So you'll forgive me for my... Always I love his videos, really love the way he explains things. I'm always glued to his videos, always, never a dull day. Um, this thing of saying uh, we're born of sin is what I don't understand. Why are we born of sin? What did we do? Why do we have to say we're born of sin? I feel like that keeps us from progressing in life. Everything else about this video was very very nice but that one thing really bothers me we need to stop saying or born of sin born of what sin what did you do you're just a baby you know nothing otherwise amazing video as usual love i mean do that make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video